Hi, this is PD at Bergsberg Arcade at bergsbergarcade.com, and this is the first part of our day-night cycle. So if we open up, we have our character controllers and our light flares. And next, I'm just going to create a basic terrain. And there we go. We have our terrain. Now, I do want to add a little bit of texture to my terrain, so I'm just going to grab the first tool, which is the raise and lower terrain. I'm just going to grab a very open brush. I will lower the opacity because I don't want really high hills, but I will increase the brush size. And I'm just going to paint some on here. And then also to test the shadows, I'm going to want to create an empty, or sorry, create a cube. And I'm going to reset its position. So it's over here. I want to zoom in on it. And I'm going to change its size a bit. I'm going to make it have a height of 5. And I'll make it 2.5 on the Y axis. So it's really up high in the ground. And I'll just simply move it into my scene. I should want it over here a little bit more. Great. So now I'm going to take our player, our first person controller here. And I'm going to drop that right beside my cube. Uh, right about there. And if I hit play, I fall through the ground. <laughs> uh, let's just zoom in on it. Make sure it's above the ground. And there we go. So let's add a directional light. And this is going to be the first of our suns. If you want more, you can always add more. But for now, let's just get one working. And I'm just going to call this yellow sun. I'm going to reset its position to... Uh, let's just reset the whole thing. So it should be at 000 with rotation 000 as well. And I want to move it a bit this way. All right, so we have that done. Now, of course, when you start it up and you take a look, I haven't added any textures to the right to the terrain. I don't really need to since I'm just looking for the shadowing and lighting. And that's something we haven't actually added to our light yet. So if we grab our light, uh, let's click soft shadows. You can go hard shadows if you want. Now I'm not going to bother playing around with the resolution and that. What I do want to do though is add a component to this. So we'll go down to rendering and we'll add a lens flare. And since mine's called yellow sun, I'm going to add a really bright yellow color to it. I'm going to click to make it directional and I'm going to add a flare. And I'll just use a sun flare. So now when we start it up, if we go over and look at the sun, we get that big bright flare. Now we want to have that move or appear to arc through the sky. And as it arcs, we also want it to change the direction of all these shadows it's casting. So we're going to create a script for that. So I'm going to create a new C Sharp script. I'm going to call it Game Time. This script is going to be responsible for keeping track of all in-game time. So later on we can also use this script to make a, a little clock display on the screen and eventually I'd like to have it you know where it's mid-morning any lights you have in your scene such as lamp posts and maybe the tavern lights or what whatnot they'll turn off and then later on at night maybe around seven eight something like that they turn back on but we'll get into that a little later on. Let's open up our game time script in mono develop and let's make sure we change the name. Now I'm going to add a couple public variables here that I want to be accessible in the inspector. And the first one is just going to be an array of transforms and this is going to hold our suns. So I'm just going to call that sun. I'm also going to make another one which is of type float and I'm going to call this one day cycle in minutes. And I'm going to give it a default value of 1 for now. And what this variable is responsible for is uh, we tell it how many real life minutes 
a whole day lasts in game. So if you have it set to one minute, that means in game a whole day will go by in one minute. And later on you can adjust it. Maybe you want your day to last an hour, so you'll be switching it to 60. But let's create an empty game object. And I'm going to call mine game time with the space in front of it so it's always at the top. And I want to attach a script to it. So I'm going to leave the day cycle in minutes as one. But for suns, I'm going to change the size to one. And I'm going to drag my yellow sun on it. Now we'll head back to Mono Develop. Now in the update method, I just want to simply rotate that first sun I added. So we'll call it a rotate on that sun. Now I did create an array and I know it's the first element in the array. So for quickly testing it, I'm just going to call that one directly and I'm going to call its rotate method. Now to get this to rotate one degree per second, we can just simply go vector three dot right times time dot delta time. Now this should rotate it on the X axis by one degree per second. So let's start it up. And we'll take a look. I gotta move over. And if you notice, the sun is rising. And if we take a look at the shadows, you'll see that the shadows are getting shorter. So great, we got our sun actually rising in the sky for us. And it's eventually gonna arc through. And it automatically adjusts the angle of the direction light so our shadows change. Now we actually want it to rotate according to our day cycle in minutes. Now almost every time when I have to deal with real time there's a few constants I like to set up. So there's private, constant, and I'm just going to make them all float for now for convenience. And the first one is just going to be called second. And I'll make that equal to one. So one second is e has a value of one. And the next one will be private, constant, float, and it'll be a minute. And this is going to be equal to 60 times second, because there's 60 seconds in a minute. And the next one will be private, constant, float, hour, and there's 60 minutes in an hour, so we'll go 60 times minute. And of course the last one that I'm going to use is const float day. And there's 24 hours in a day, so 24 times hour. So now anytime I call this constant day, what I'm actually going to get is how many seconds are in the day. And the same thing for hour. I'll get how many seconds are actually in an hour. Since we're going to be dealing with seconds in game, it's just better off to convert everything to that right at the start. Now since down here this rotates one degree per second, I want to create a variable that I can actually store in there. So I'm going to create another private variable of type float. And I'm just going to call this degree rotation. And later on when I actually want to keep track of the passage of time for our clock, I'll also want a variable of type float again. And I'm going to call this one time of day. Now since I know I want my son to do a full 360 degree revolution in one day, there's one more constant I'm going to add up here. So it's going to be a private constant of type float. And I'll call this degrees. Per day or per second and this is going to be equal to 360 which is one full revolution divided by the seconds in a day now let's head down to our start method and start setting some of these things up so I'll start off with my time of day equaling zero and my degree rotation is going to be equal to the degrees per second times the seconds in a day
divided by our day cycle in minutes multiplied by cycle or seconds in a minute. So we have how many degrees it has to rotate per second. We're going to multiply that by how many seconds in a day. And then we'll want to divide it by the amount of time that we're entering in for our day cycle. And we want to convert it to seconds, so we're going to multiply it by minutes since we're inputting minutes. Now let's come down here. And for the rotation now, we're going to say a new vector 3. And I want to keep it rotating on the x-axis. So I'm just going to say degrees or degree rotation and then zero for the other axis. I'm going to multiply it by the time dot delta time. And then I also want to add how long it took for this frame from the last frame to our time of day. And I'm also just going to debug out how much time has passed. And let's go test that out. So we don't have any errors. I have two audio listeners. I've got a second camera. If you notice, there's one that comes with the first person controller. So I'm just going to get rid of this other one. So let's start it up. And I'll run over and take a look at my son. And it's not moving. So I've got some calculation wrong. Let me just quickly recap. Right here should have been day. We'll start this back up. We'll run over, take a look. And as you notice, the sun's rising, and it should take a whole minute to do a full revolution. And our shadows are shrinking. And if we watch the timer down in the bottom, when that sun reaches the other edge, it should be 30 seconds. And there we go. So how do we set this up for multiple suns? Uh, instead of just typing in that zero, we'll just put a loop here now. So I'm going to create our standard for loop. So int equals zero, or int cnt equals zero. cnt is less than our sun dot length. And we'll want to increase the counter. And now I'll just replace this zero here for the index with CNT. I'll go back in. I'm going to duplicate my sun. And this one I'm going to call red sun. Now remember it rotates on the x axis. So I'm going to move mine over here and I'm going to rotate it this way and actually I'm gonna move it over here a little, a little bit I'm gonna change it to a red Sun and I'm gonna lower its brightness to half we'll have to come up to our game time tell it we now have two suns and I'm gonna drag the yellow Sun into the first one I'll hold my red in the second it really does matter which one you have or the order I should say and let's start it up and there we go we have two suns and if you notice they're traveling on different paths and they're both going to take 30 seconds to complete a revolution and the x-axis on this one if you look at it is pointing this way oh, I'm on the train if you notice, the x-axis is pointing on this one, so it's going to arc this way. And if we go look at the yellow sun, the x-axis is pointing this way, so it's going to rotate this way. So that's the first part of our day-night cycle. Uh, we've got the suns moving, and we're off to a good start. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.